Grace, Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray you all are doing good. Uh, as you can hear, I have hoarseness of my voice in my, I think it's about three or four days since my sound has been uh, muffled and uh, I am experiencing some sore throat. Uh, we have a real enemy and the warfare is real. But we have a God who is mightier than the enemy. And there is no way that a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ can quit just because she has hoarseness of the sound or voice or just because her her body is tired or just because she doesn't feel like it. You know, we are on duty. We have to fulfill the call of our master when he calls us. And so even with a hoarse voice, I'm here. I pray that you all can hear me and I pray that you all can understand what I'm saying. So, um, it's succession of what we have been talking and, you know, I just want to continue about what we, from where we stopped. So again, I welcome you all. Just a few disclaimers because I've been having some additional attacks. Uh, this is not from the devil, but this is from people, people who have, um, you know, attacked me in so many ways and that I had to turn off the comment sections and so I very lovingly tell you that if you are not holiness minded or if you do not believe in holiness or if you think that uh, you know holiness is not for you or if you do not believe that external adornment can be a hindrance to a holy lifestyle please leave please please leave this is not for you i forgot to tell in my last message and and a lot of people misunderstood me and that's why i remember to tell this in the beginning of the video please leave this is not for you um, this is only for people who are even maybe they are curious maybe they are um, they want to know more and you know and these are for people who really want to change not attack not find fault again another thing i wanted to say is this is not targeted to a particular race of people this is not targeted to indian people or white people or asian people or european people or african people or any particular people this is for the bride of christ this is for the church of god this is for women and men who want to pursue holiness it's Especially women, because Abbas said women do not make it to heaven because of vanity. You know, I don't care what the world says and how the world condemns, you know, saying that it does not matter how you dress up and God looks at the heart. That is your way of thinking. And I respect that. So my brothers and sisters, I welcome you once again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, I continue from where I stopped. Before I actually go into the scriptures, and I, as you know, in my previous videos, I was talking about scriptures because... Um, because what we stand for has to have a scriptural reference. All scripture is God breathed or spirit breathed. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. And I pray that the Lord opens your internal spiritual eyes to know what I am saying today. But this is to get to heaven so that we can be faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ in our journey on planet earth. The Lord told me while I was in this journey, he asked me, have you seen the women in traditional military belonging to any country in the world? And he asked me, what stands out? What do you find in all of these women in every country who are employed in the military? The answer was very simple. The answer was that they are simple. They look so simple. And they are always in uniform. They all are simple and uniform. There's uniformity. They're conservative and they're modest. They blend in and do not stand out. They know why they are in the battlefield. They know that their goal is to protect their country against an invading, unforgiving enemy. They are mission-oriented and purpose-driven. They are fierce and fearless. These women are mothers wives, daughters, aunties, granddaughters, etc. But they forget their family while they're on the battlefield and they watch out for their comrades' life, forfeiting their own life. They do not care about makeup and hair and heels on the battlefield, my beloved. 
they are trained to loathe vanity and everything that attaches themselves to the civilian world while they are in the combat uniform. Why do they do that? Why do they forfeit vanity? Why? Again, the answer is simple. Because of their mission entrusted to them by their commander. Because they do not want attachments to be a hindrance in combat. Another reason is for safety reasons. So that their attachments are not caught into moving machinery, equipments, weapons, dense foliage, creepers, shrubs, you name it. They want to be undetected by the enemy's radar. And if they're caught, they do not want to look captivating or alluring to the enemy only to be raped or molested or abused or taken as a prisoner of war. Another reason is so that they can fight physically and mentally with their armor, tactical gear and weapons on. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 to 4 says, Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Psalms 18, verses 39 says, For you equip me with strength for battle. You made those rise against me sink under me. Amen. My beloved brother or sister, if you are a soldier for Christ, you must dress like a soldier. You must act like a soldier. You must perform like a soldier. You must accept commands from your commander like a soldier. You must be driven like a soldier. You must be mission oriented like a soldier. You must carry your weapon all times like a soldier. You must be brave like a soldier. You must think about others like a soldier. You must save others like a soldier. You must learn to crucify selfish desires like a soldier. You must learn to fight like a soldier. And finally, you must learn how to be a martyr for your country. And in case of a Christian, you must learn how to lay your life down for the sake of the cross. My precious beloved saints, your vanity could be a hindrance for you to die for Christ. Your vanity could be a crutch for living as a living sacrifice. Your vanity could attract the enemy. Your vanity could cost your own soul, my brother, my sister. Let us be a true soldier for Jesus Christ. May his cause, his mission, his orders, his directions, his plans, his voice navigate every step of our lives. Hallelujah. I continue with the scripture where I last ended. I continue with a very, very strong scripture this time. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 16 onwards, all the way to 24. Isaiah gives a picture of the collapsing human society with self-sufficiency and self-centeredness in these passages. Now he talks to the daughters of Zion, that is Jewish women, and he is, he is actually scolding them. He's saying the daughters of Zion are haughty, walking along with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes. The King James Version says wanton eyes, W-A-N-T-O-N, -N, eyes, wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making tinkling with their feet. I'm going to break each of those uh, phrases and explain each of them according to the research I did and according to the different biblical commentaries. Please don't tell me it's not in the Bible. It is in the Bible. This is extensive research done from biblical commentaries. So let's come to the first phrase, outstretched necks. Outstretched necks, according to the commentaries and different versions, mean shamelessly extending elevating, displaying neck ostentatiously, protruding your neck as far as possible to attract men. Did you hear that? To attract men. Also as a sign of pride and haughtiness. This type of behavior is seen in Indian dance to allure men. It is also done by women to look taller, used as a mirage a false delusion this is also used as a false deception 
to entice and to entrap men with outstretched necks. The second point is wanton eyes, W-E-N-T-O-N, eyes. According to the King James Version, the original Hebrew, it says, Ume shake roth inayim. The word shakar means false or deceiving. Something that is false or deceiving. The art of deceiving by luring eyes. Eyes are the portals to one's soul. And the commentary says, the Jewish women falsely set off their eyes by coloring their eyelids and eyelashes with something called as the stibium, S-T-I-B-I-U-M, which is a black powder of the lead ore in back in Isaiah's time. So coloring of eyes did not happen with Kim Kardashian. Coloring of eyes did not happen with Deepika Padukone. It happened back in the days of Isaiah. Now, this is what history says. The Chaldeans, those are the ancient Assyrians and Babylonian people who lived in 1910 BC or 539 BC, who migrated to the Mesopotamian region near the Persian Gulf, used the stibium, commonly for coloring their eyes. The ancient texts called them stibiolinitas oculus or they also call them inturi inuri oculus is what the ancient texts or literature says you can do your own research and and learn more about that some other ancient texts that are non-biblical for instance some Assyrian author called as the Petro Delta Valley describes his Assyrian wife born in Mesopotamia explains how her eyelashes are long and painted with stibium. These are ancient texts. Another ancient text of Xenophon of the Astagus, the grandfather of Cyrus and of Medes, explains in his text that his grandfather painted his eyes with majestic shade to make his eyes great or look big. His eyes were also called the great eyes or the big eyes because of the paint that was used as a shade. Another book in Sandy Travels, page number 67, talks about Turkish women have a principal repute, blacker the eye, the more appealing to sight. There's another sect of women in the ancient text called as the Moorish women, M-O-O-R-I-S-H, Moorish women. These are women from the northwestern part of Africa, also called as the Moabitess woman. The ancient texts about these women say that they do not consider themselves to be dressed till they have tinged their hair, stained or painted or tainted or colored their hair and tinged their eyelids and eyelashes with mineral ore or powder. Why am I explaining all of this history? Because this did not start right here in our generation or this did not start with feminism in the USA. This existed way back in Isaiah's time. Not the Jewish women did this, but the secular women of those times who are the non-Jewish women, the non hebrew Hebrew women did this and Isaiah is saying, woe Jewish women, woe to you. Why are you doing this? Aren't you the women of Zion created in the image of God? Why are you following the world? Do not confirm to the world. The world paints their eyes. The world taints their eyes. The world paints their hands. The world wears jewelry. The world does this. You are not supposed to do it. And when you do it, you are copying what the world is doing. Did you see a link there? A historical link. Jewish women did not do this, but they copied what the non-Hebrew women back in their days did. Please do your research and find out. It was not just women, but men did it too. Even in India right now, you know, a lot of um, Muslim men still wear the eyeliner, deep eyeliner, you know, we call it the kajal. Men, Indian men wear kajal for cultural reasons. You see in the movie Passion of Christ, Herod wearing 
eyeliner. Uh, it's that deep stibium that they wear. That's a part of their culture. Secular men did it. Non-Hebrew men did it. Isaiah chapter 3 verses 24 to 26 now talks about the depravity or the punishment that God does because they are following occultic practices or non-Jewish practices or things that are abominable to Yahweh. And this is what the Bridgeway Bible Commentary says. The women who enjoyed the luxuries of the upper class now suffer humiliation in the hands of the Lord for arrogance, selfishness, new found moral freedom. This is from Isaiah 3, 24 to 26 again. Their extravagance is now replaced by poverty, their vanity by shame. They once tempted men with artificial beauty, but now they find themselves begging men to marry them so that they will not be left childless. So many men in Isaiah's time were killed in battle that they would not be enough husbands. That is specifically Isaiah chapter 3 verses 25. Now, does not this remind of the current state of our nation, of our nations? Where are our men? I recently made a, a, a tribute for men honoring all the fathers of the world. I got attacked for that too. Where are our men? Where are our men of God? Why are the roles reversed? Why did women take up the role of a man? And why are men without jobs wandering around? Why do women have to try so, so hard to gain the attention of a man? Where are the God-fearing men? Where are men in general? Oh, some of them are in prisons. Some of them are in gangs and have other affiliations. Some of them are homosexuals. The others are players. They are smooth operators, as the world calls them, or Casanovas. The others are drug dealers, alcohol addicts, and sex addicts. Yet, still others are married or already taken. So when a woman finds a man, she dates him for years and years and years, sometimes have a couple of children, and still the man fails to commit because the roles have reversed. It is the woman who is trying to find a man and not the other way. Sometimes these men are already married with kids, but they pose as single men because they know women are searching. They are not the hunters anymore. They are the hunted. Sometimes they just want to have fun and do not want to settle down. So what do women do when they do not find adequate men? They try harder. They try harder. They go extra on external adornments. Way extra. Now, how do I know that? Many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I should say, I used to go to a church that had more than 3,000 members. And one day, of course, I was single back then. So I one day went to a singles conference. There were more than 200 women who showed up for the conference. Women who were as old as 68, 70 years old. How do I know it? They were on the stage. They were introducing themselves. Young women who were 18 and 19. How do I know that? They were on the stage as well. Women who were from all walks of life, single mothers, single women, divorced mothers, never married, abandoned mothers, rejected mothers, you know, all kinds of women. It was a conference for single people. And did you know how many men attended the conference? You would be surprised. Guess how many? Zero. Zero men attended the conference. What do you think had happened? This is a church of more than... 3,000 members. The only two men that were on stage was our pastor, the bishop of the church. And the second person was the cameraman who had to actually record this whole seminar live. And he made sure that he wore a fat, chunky wedding ring on his finger so that he wanted to tell all these 200 women, listen, sisters, I'm your brother. Uh -uh, don't come chasing me. And in all of their conversation, in the seminar, 
all that I heard was, I don't like this kind of man. I don't like that kind of man. I cannot stand a man who is short. I cannot stand a man who is chunky. I cannot stand a man who is too light. I cannot stand a man who is too dark. I do not like a man who does not flush the toilet. I cannot stand a man who leaves his toilet seat up. I cannot stand a man who chews aloud. I cannot stand a man who does not like his father. I cannot stand a man who loves his mother too much. I cannot stand a man if he talks to his mother too much. I cannot stand a man who has a has a pouch or has a belly. I cannot stand a man who does not know how to, um, you know, charm me or allure me or who cannot treat me as a queen or as a princess. Blah, 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 blah. Just cannot, cannot, will not, could not. I was so depressed and I was so dejected by the single women's conference. I was trying to find nudges that I can take back. All I found myself was feeling sad because women there put on their likes and dislikes on display. Don't you think all these men brothers were watching it live? Sadly, none of them are still married. Sadly. One thing if I would end today's talk, because I know I have a lot of young sisters who are unmarried, a lot of sisters who are waiting, a lot of brothers who are waiting for their partner. If I could tell one thing to you, it is do not give importance to external appearance. Yes, as long as they are fairly okay, that's all. Internal is what matters when it comes to do they love Jesus? What if your woman is simple, no adoration, no makeup, no lipstick. You don't even know how long her hair is. You do not even know how she looks like because she has worn this baggy clothes. My brothers, are you going to still like her? Would you even date her? Do you think that woman has a chance? Or are you forcing these women to wear tons of makeup and reverse the roles? Where are my brothers? I'm waiting for my brothers to stand up and pick up their God-given mental and their assignment in the name of Jesus. Where are you, my brothers? You are the hunters. You are the ones who have to chase women. You are the ones. When Rebecca was brought to Isaac, Isaac was meditating. My brothers, are you meditating? Are you meditating while your Rebecca is on her way? Would you like a woman without makeup? Sisters, would you like a man of God who does not look like a Greek God, who does not look like Ryan Gosling or whoever you have in your mind? Would you accept him if he's a little bit chunky, if he has not shaved, if he has not clip his nails, if he has a little bit of belly, would you accept him if he is not that dark or if he's not too light, would you still accept him? Do not miss out on your rib trying to find the most good looking and the most sensually appealing partner. It is fake. A person like that does not exist. I often tell my brothers and sisters that God, and I say it as a, as a joke sometimes, for humor's sake sometimes, that God is a person who does not know how to wrap gift is a poor gift wrapper. I say it as a joke because I know it is not because he is a poor gift wrapper in its real sense, but because he's testing you to see, would you open the gift if it is in a simple package? Would you still open it if it is in a newspaper, but it is from a badaddy? Maybe your life partner would come in the simplest of simple forms. No external adornment at all. Would you still love him would you still try to open that gift if that wrapper is untidy or if that wrapper is not alluring would you open i pray my brothers and sisters that this day that you will find your life partner that you would not be running after external adornment in jesus name we will continue next week i pray that the almighty father opens your eyes to the internal wisdom, to the spiritual realm. I pray that the Father gives you strength to give away everything that is weighing in his eyes. We are the soldiers of the cross. Let us dress up spiritually like the soldiers of the cross, forfeiting everything that is vain 
for the sake of the cross. I bless you with these words in the name of the Lord Jesus. Till next time, goodbye and God bless you.